So this is the fastest path to master any programming language in 2023. And look, I know you're expecting me to give you some magic pill that's gonna magically make you an amazing programmer instantly. You're expecting me to give you the tricks, the hacks, the shortcuts, and that is the root of your problems. So as the title of this video suggests, I will give you the path to master any programming language that is the fastest, but that does not mean it will be the easiest or that it will be easy in general. So as long as you understand that, mastering any programming language can be done much faster faster than you think. And by the way, this applies to any programming language. If you're a beginner, you should just pick one language. Just pick one, ideally a popular one like Python or JavaScript, and then just stick to it. Because what you will learn is once you go through this path with one language, the path to mastering all of them is really the same. And it all starts with you. So I want you to do something. I want you to look at your life right now as it is. Is there something missing? Are you perhaps looking for a certain kind of life, a certain kind of career? Are you looking to make money? What what is the trigger that is leading you to want to learn the code right now? You know, what is the thing that separates people like Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, or all these super successful engineers and tech people and entrepreneurs in the world? Is it the fact that they were born with some magic ability that allows them to just create these amazing companies that is success from nothing? No, it's the fact that they dedicated their lives to their craft, their business. And why were they able to do that? It's because they had a very clear North Star that was guiding them toward like whatever it is with Elon Musk, whatever you think about him, he has decided that the purpose of his life is to get humanity to Mars. And that is the North Star, the why, the reason that is guiding him. And by the way, I'm not saying that you need to have this like massive like North Star and that you need to dedicate your entire life to coding. But what I am saying is that to do anything, to do anything that's difficult, you need a strong why, because otherwise, once the going gets tough, you're going to give up. So before you get started with anything, be very clear on the reason why you're embarking on this journey in the first place and going straight into the second step so the thing you need to realize about learning the code is that programming is not like other sort of sciencey topics that you might have learned at school it's not like physics it's not like chemistry where the purpose is to memorize a set of topics where you just have to know that the formula for this and that is this thing or that this is how these molecules go together like no programming at its core is really a style of thinking. And specifically, programming is really not about the code that you write, it's about how you think. And specifically, it's about solving problems using something called algorithmic thinking. So here I have a book. And I want you to bear with me for a second here because this is going to make sense in a second. So if I told you to find page 70 from this book, what would you do? You would probably do something like estimate how many pages are in this book and just like sort of open the book from some page over here. We got to page 170. So you didn't get to 70. So now what would you do next to try to get to 70? Well, you would probably search for page 70 from this left hand side of the book because 70 is less than 117 so there's no point in looking at this right hand side of the book because you know that the page is not going to be there so you would open another page sort of estimate there's probably in there okay we got to 100 etc etc until you get to 70. Now, why am I telling you this? What we just did is really just apply algorithmic thinking and programming and this core is really about thinking how to solve problems in terms of a sequence of steps. And the sequence of steps is what we know as algorithms. Just now the algorithm, AKA the sequence of steps that we applied to find page 70 from my book was open a page at a random page. So that was step one. Step two, if the page that we're looking for is less than the page that we landed at, open a random page again from the left hand side of the book and if it is more than that open a random page from the right hand side of the book and then the next step would be to basically just repeat the above steps so essentially we were in what we know as a loop so we were looping through the same sequence of steps until we get to the result which is the output that we're looking for now if you know some basics of coding you might already sort of see in your brain like how this could be expressed in code in terms of like a while loop or a for loop and then some checks for equality and things like this but we just 
just made an algorithm without writing any lines of code. And that is exactly my point. Programming isn't about the code that you write, it isn't about the exact syntax or how you specifically type them out. It's about thinking how to solve logical problems. If you take some course on computer architecture, you will learn that at its core, computers are really just machines that execute instructions one after the other. So what programming is, is that we are telling computers what instructions to execute and in what order. That is really what it's all about. And then the exact syntax of how you actually perform it in whatever programming language is trivial. That is not important. So step number two is to learn how to think like a computer. This is the really challenging part. Like it's not easy to train your brain to do that. But there's actually one thing that you can do to make this a lot easier for you. But I'm going to get back to that in a second because it also ties in with something else that I want to talk about now. So now that you understand what you really need to master, if you want to master any programming language, which is how to think about solving problems. Now let's get a bit more specific because if you've started learning some programming language already, chances are that you're doing it completely wrong. But first, we need to understand like what actually happens in your brain when you're learning. So imagine you're a human 10,000 years ago and now suddenly there is a storm and you need to build a shelter. What do you do? Well, you have no idea how to build a shelter, but because that is your only option, you just start scrambling. You start putting things together and eventually you will manage to build that shelter and you save your family. And so the great thing is, and the reason why you survived is because your brain has the ability to learn things. The literal purpose of your brain is to allow you to get better at doing things that aid you in survival. So in this situation, you learn how to do this shelter. So the next time when you need to do it, you already know how to do it. So there's not as much of a risk of you die. But the thing is that your brain has limited resources. And that means that your brain is gonna try to only expand its learning like neural resources on learning the things that are actually important for your survival. So if you imagine another scenario where there is no storm, but some smart ass guy in your tribe just tells you like, oh, by the way, this is how you build a shelter. Your brain is going to be like, well, cool. But it's not going to expend resources to make you learn how to build that shelter because it doesn't understand that it's important to you because you haven't actually needed to do it. Now, why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you this because what this all means is that your brain is really primed to learn through one thing. Even in this modern world, where we don't need to worry about dying of a storm, at least in most places, the way that you can trick your brain, the thing that you're learning is important for your survival is by actively and obsessively like trying to take action on that information. So when there's something in your brain, like some basics of coding, the one thing that you can do to really solidify in your brain and to trick your brain to think that that coding knowledge is now super important for your survival is to actively and obsessively try to build something with it because that's going to make your brain now think like, oh, he's spending all of his days like trying to build this project using his coding skills. That must mean that this is super important. So let's solidify these concepts in the brains, in the neurons, so that next time when you need to build something, your brain is just going to automatically know how to do it because it's going to think that otherwise you're going to die. So the conclusion of this and the reason why most people learn completely wrong is that you don't learn by watching. You don't learn by listening because it doesn't signal to your brain that this is important because you're not trying to retrieve that information, you're not trying to use that information. So the third step is to pick a project, a specific thing that you want to build with code and absolutely obsess about building it and learn the steps along the way. But remember, I promised you to not only tell you how to master any programming language, but also how to do it really fast. So that last point was more like sciency and like it might have been a bit of a revelation to you about how your brain works and things like this. This last point is really a lot more mundane. We're going on a bit of a side tangent here. Now, one of the great things about a career as a programmer is that you don't necessarily have to put in a lot of man hours in order to get a lot of value, in order to get a lot of output. Why? Because programming is leverage. You can write one line of code that runs on 10 million computers. This is not the case with most traditional careers like bankers or lawyers, where in order to produce more output or more value, you just have to put in more hours, more manual work on your part. Because in most careers, you have very little leverage on your time. Programming alongside other things like social media, which is what I'm doing here, for example, is one of the greatest tools of leverage that we have access to in the 21st century, meaning that your inputs can be multiplied in theory, infinitely 
infinitely with no extra work on your part. That is why programmers can make a lot of money while not necessarily working that many hours at least compared to people like lawyers or bankers and things like this. But, and this is a massive but, this only happens if that programmer is really good, if they know exactly what code to write quickly. And how does this happen? By being really good at programming. And how does that happen? By putting a lot, like a ridiculous amount of hours in the beginning to learn the skills so that they have the ability to then create this massive value with the code that they write. This is the thing that's gonna make algorithmic thinking and thinking like a computer easier, faster, is by putting in a lot of reps. If you're looking for a structured way to apply all of these steps in one place, you can check out my flagship program, Python Developer Masterclass, down below in the description. It's designed for beginners, and it's designed to take you from zero to a 100K programming job at the end of it. Colleges are becoming more and more overpriced and more and more outdated for the value that you actually get. So I realized after my own journey of becoming a software engineer myself, in this day and age, there's really no reason to pay tens of thousands of dollars and spend like four years on a university just to become a software engineer. Because the thing is like, universities and most courses, they don't even tell you everything you need to know. They might teach you the syntax of coding, but they don't tell you how to think like a computer, how to really solve problems. They might introduce you to a lot of topics around programming, but they don't really tell you how they all tie together. And most importantly, they don't tell you how to actually get hired. I also give you optimized resume templates, LinkedIn templates, so that all of this like annoying work that you have to do in the process of actually getting hired with your skills is really automated for you. The thing is, I'm also continuously updating with more modules as I have more time to develop them and you don't have to pay extra for any of them. When you get it, you get a full free lifetime access for all future updates. But, and the only but is, as I expand the course, so as I expand the value of the course, I do also increase the price of the course and the current price will expire with no warning. So make sure you get in now while you still can at the current price. The biggest problem people have is that they're impatient. They complain that, oh, I tried learning the code, but I couldn't do it. It's not that you were doing the wrong thing, it's that you just don't have enough reps doing that thing yet. And the question about will you learn the code or not is not about can you do it, it's about are you willing to? Are you willing to put in the work that is required?